In a hangar at Schiphol Airport, the Netherlands Aviation Safety Board investigators scour the wreckage for clues to explain the crash of Flight 433. They need to know if the plane suffered a flight control malfunction. We want to exclude all possible factors that could have contributed to the accident. Uh, let's start with the rudder. Investigators know the plane veered to the right during the landing attempt, but they don't know why. In the air, pilots move the rudder left and right to control the plane's yaw, or horizontal rotation. It's a critical control surface for helping them line up with the runway. Investigators wonder if the rudder malfunctioned just before landing. They need to examine the rudder locking device. It's used to lock the rudder in place to prevent it moving in a heavy wind while on the ground. Did the rudder lock somehow engage in flight, causing a catastrophic loss of control? Can I take a look? A rudder lock, if it would be still on, would certainly degrade the authority of the rudder. So you check that. They study the rudder components. They look for any sign of a malfunction in the gust lock system. There's nothing wrong with it. The lock is fine. We didn't find anything wrong with the gust lock. Further analysis reveals that all of the plane's other flight control surfaces were also working properly. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. The cause of the deadly disaster lies somewhere else. KLM 43, can you give me any details? Investigators know that the KLM pilots reported an oil pressure problem. KLM 433, situation's under control. We have an engine oil pressure problem in engine number two. They need to know what that problem was and if it contributed to the crash. You could have a seizure of an engine or overheating because of the, the oil uh, is not there. Um. Turbines are moving. There's no evidence that the engines overheated or seized due to a lack of oil. Any damages from the impact? Not from oil pressure. There's no evidence of any oil pressure issues at all. It seems the pilots reported a problem that didn't exist. We checked, of course, the rest of the engine. Well, a thorough investigation and we didn't find any other malfunctions on the engine. Why would they report a problem if they didn't have one? What were they looking at? Investigators now wonder, did the cockpit instruments somehow malfunction and mislead the pilots? Right engine oil pressure. Check, take action. Copy, taking action. So the next step is that you look in all the systems to see if there were any malfunctions that could explain why there was a lower oil pressure. Are we ready? Testing the oil pressure gauges and warning systems from the Saab 340 should tell investigators if the KLM pilots were getting accurate oil pressure readings. There's nothing wrong here, the gauge is working fine. They find no malfunction in the oil pressure gauge. Hold on. That shouldn't happen. But the warning light is another matter. Okay, let's, uh, let's do it again. Okay. Hmm. That's strange. It's uh, giving an intermittent warning. It's another surprising discovery. The oil pressure warning light sometimes activates even when the pressure is normal. Digging deeper, they examine the switch that controls the warning light. We suspected the oil pressure switch, so we looked into that. Ah, okay. 
Okay, there's a short circuit in the switch. The oil pressure switch, it had a uh, malfunction, it had a short. Now they understand what the pilots were seeing, a false warning. Has the airline asked you to become an instructor? No, not yet. You need a lot of experience to get there. It's a big responsibility. Right engine oil pressure. An electrical short in the oil pressure switch caused the warning light to come on when it shouldn't have. The oil pressure warning itself was false and the engine was operating normally. So, they were seeing a false warning, but that doesn't explain the accident.